one very interesting and useful reaction in organic chemistry that has to do with benzenes is known as the friedel craft alkylation reaction. So basically, friedel craft alkylation is a reaction that gives us a way to alkylate our benzene molecules without actually destroying their aromaticity, without actually destroying their aromatic character. So basically this reaction gives us a way to form carbon-carbon bonds. It gives us a way to add hydrocarbons onto our benzene molecules. So to see exactly what we mean, let's take a look at the following reaction. So if we take a benzene molecule shown here and we mix it into a solution that contains isopropyl bromide, no reaction actually takes place. However, if we add a little bit of a catalyst, for example, aluminum bromide, our reaction does take place. So if we take our catalyst, mix it with, their, with our isopropyl bromide and benzene, we get the following product, the isopropyl benzene. And this is one example of the friedel crafts alkylation reaction. So basically, if we replace this isopropyl group with some arbitrary hydrocarbon R group, this is the general form of the friedel crafts alkylation reaction. So in this lecture, we're going to study the reaction mechanism of this particular reaction, the friedel crafts alkylation of benzenes. So let's begin with step number one. I've basically broken down into three different steps. We have step one, the formation of our good Lewis acid, our good electrophile. In step two, we have the electrophilic substitution of the benzene ring. And in step three, we have the reformation, regeneration of aromaticity as well as of our catalyst. So let's begin with step one. So in most reactions that pertain to benzene, the first step is basically the formation of our strong electrophile, the formation of our strong Lewis acid. Remember, our benzene is a nucleophile. It's a Lewis base. And for a Lewis base to react with a Lewis acid, we have to produce a good Lewis acid. And that's exactly where this catalyst comes into play. We place the catalyst into our solution so that the catalyst reacts with this isopropyl bromide. And the reaction mechanism is shown in this step. Basically, the lone pair of electrons on the bromide grabs our aluminum, forming a bond, a sigma bond, between the bromide and our aluminum. And that places a positive charge on the bromide and a negative charge on our aluminum. So basically what this does is it weakens the bond between the bromide and our carbon. So on the reactant side, the bond between the carbon and bromide was a very strong bond. And that's exactly why if this wasn't here, this weak nucleophile, the benzene, would not be able to simply attack this carbon displacing this bromide because one, this bromide is a bad leaving group and two, this carbon bromide bond is strong. But in the presence of our catalyst, the aluminum bromide catalyst, we undergo this reaction, weakening this bond between carbon and bromide. In fact, there is resonance stabilization. So basically, this bond can actually break and the pair of electrons can end up on the bromide. So now we have the positive charge shifts from our bromide to this carbon. So we have a carbocation intermediate. So basically in the first step in the formation of our good electrophile of the good strong Lewis acid, we have the formation of a resonance stabilized structure. So bromide forms a bond with aluminum forming a resonance stabilized complex in which the charge is distributed among two atoms. So we have the positive charge can appear on the bromide or it can appear on the carbon within 
this carbocation intermediate. So this complex is now a very good Lewis acid. It's a very good electrophile and it has a very good leaving group where before the leaving group wasn't very good. And now if we move on to the second step, the second step involves the benzene molecule actually acting as a Lewis base as a nucleophile attacking our Lewis acid. So one of our pi bonds basically attacks this carbon here displacing this entire complex because this is now our good leaving group. We form the following intermediate. Now, although I haven't shown it in this diagram, but this is also resonance stabilized. Basically, if this pi bond shifts to this side, there's a positive charge on this carbon. And then if this pi bond shifts here, when the positive charge is found here, the positive charge will shift onto this carbon. So we see that there is a delocalization of our positive charge. And that, of course, is a stabilizing effect. So in the second step, the benzene acts as a nucleophile attacking our Lewis acid and displacing our leaving group as shown in this diagram. Now, notice that when we go from this step to this step, we lose aromaticity. So our benzene no longer has that aromatic character. Now, in the third step, we basically want to regenerate our catalyst and we want to regenerate, reform aromaticity. And the way we're going to do that is in the following manner. So basically, we take these two intermediates and our bromide, this bond basically breaks off and grabs this H atom that is found on the same carbon as this isopropyl group. This takes off the H atom. This basically breaks off, reforming our catalyst. We form HBr. In the process, this sigma bond now forms a pi bond between this carbon and this carbon, reforming our benzene molecule. So the last step is the deprotonation of our benzene, basically our substitution. We substitute our H for our isopropyl group. And this is the final step in our reaction. This is the friedel crafts alkylation. So basically, this is one specific type of friedel crafts alkylation, but if we wanted to, we can replace this isopropyl group with some arbitrary hydrocarbon R group, and the reaction mechanism will be exactly the same. Now, although this is a very useful reaction, the friedel crafts alkylation has its limitations. And that's because under certain conditions, when we use certain R groups, different products can actually form as a result of halide or alkyl rearrangements. So friedel crafts alkylation does not always produce the product that we are looking for. And this is once again as a result of halide uh, rearrangement, halide shifts. So to see exactly what we mean, let's suppose we take this benzene ring and now instead of using this isopropyl group, we instead use the following propyl bromide. So let's see what the products will be. There are two products that will form. The minor product will be the following and the major product will be this molecule. So the major product of this reaction is the same product that was formed in this reaction. The question is why? What takes place? Well, to answer this question, let's take a look at the first reaction, the first step of our reaction mechanism. So in the first step of this reaction, a hydride shift, a hydride rearrangement will take place. And the reason it takes place is because we transform a less stable primary carbocation intermediate to a more stable secondary carbocation intermediate. So basically in the first step, we have this 
molecule binding with our aluminum bromide as shown in this example. But this is not the only resonance stabilized form that could exist. We can basically have this sigma bond break off forming uh, two lone electrons on this bromide, removing that, neg that positive charge from the bromide and placing that positive charge on this primary carbon. Now notice this is resonance stabilized, but if this H atom with our two electron now rearranges and shifts itself all the way to this primary carbon, the positive charge will basically move from the primary carbon to the secondary carbon. So when our halide shift takes place, we form the following carbocation. And this, of course, will also be resonance stabilized, so we'll have a second resonance stabilized form in which the bromide will form a bond with this carbon in the middle. So basically because this intermediate is more stable than this intermediate here because we have a secondary versus a primary carbocation, this will be thermodynamically more stable and lower in energy and so this will exist more of the time and that means the product that goes through this intermediate will be the one that will dominate at the end and that's exactly why this is the major product and this is the minor product this is our intermediate that basically leads to the formation of the isopropyl benzene while this intermediate leads to the formation of simply propyl benzene so basically, one thing, one important thing that we conclude about the friedel crafts alkylation reaction is, although it is a very useful way of actually alkylating our benzene molecules, it is limited in the sense that sometimes we have rearrangements that can take place. And when rearrangements do take place, other products can form products that we do not want to actually form. So for example, if we wanted to form only this product and we used these reactants, we know that this other product will be formed. In fact, it would be the major product. And that of course is a problem if we are looking only for this particular product.